The plate element in space gas can be used to model features such as walls, slabs, plates, tanks, retaining structures, and so forth. In this video, we will show how you can model the slabs in a multi-story building. On the screen we see a simple two-story model that was previously generated with the structure wizard. At this stage it contains just beams and columns. We can add slabs by clicking the Draw Plates button on the top toolbar. While in drawing mode we can switch at any time between drawing members, triangular plates and quadrilateral plates by pressing the M, T, or Q keys respectively. Let's begin by selecting quadrilateral plates and drawing an elevated slab. We attach to the perimeter nodes and then specify an initial default plate thickness. Of course this can be changed for any of the other plates later. To disconnect from the plate just drawn, we can press the escape key or click the right mouse button and then continue drawing at a different location. To finish drawing, we can press the escape key or right mouse button twice. Now we will copy these slabs up to the next floor. By selecting them, clicking the right mouse button, choosing the copy tool, along a line, and then selecting the ends of a vector that represents the vertical distance from the existing floor to the next. Being finite elements, we now need to mesh the plates so that an accurate solution can be obtained. We do this by selecting them, clicking the right mouse button, and selecting the mesh tool. In this case we will mesh the plates down to a 1 meter element size. Generally speaking, the finer the mesh, the more accurate the solution. However, you need to consider the trade-off between the fineness of the mesh and the size of the model and corresponding analysis time. It is important that the beams around the perimeter of the floor slabs are properly connected to the slabs at the intermediate mesh points. We must therefore confirm that the split members option at the bottom is ticked. This will subdivide the beams to match the plate meshing and the intermediate nodes will be shared by the plates and the beams. Without this, there would be no connection between the beams and the slabs along the slab edges. Looking at the model in the renderer, and showing the plate edges, you can see how the plates are meshed and by activating the gaps at nodes, you can see how the beams have been subdivided to match the plate meshing. You can also see that the slabs and beams all have their centers aligned vertically at the node level. This alignment can be seen more clearly if we reduce the member's opacity. The alignment may be alright in many cases. However, for a more exact model, we could offset the beams and slabs so that their vertical alignment is more realistic. Let's offset the beams downward so that their top surfaces are at the node level, and offset the slabs upward so that they sit atop the beams. An easy way to select the longitudinal beams is to use the Find tool, and to specify their section property number. Once selected, we open the Properties form and apply the required offset. Next, we repeat the process for the smaller transverse beams.
Finally, we offset the slabs upward by half their thickness. When we take another look in the renderer, we can see that the model is now aligned correctly. In the next video, we will apply some loads, analyze the model, and then look at the results that are produced.